Hello everyone, my name is Vladimir Kovtun uh, and today's topic is web development with accessibility in mind. Um, I'm working in Vardin, Core Elements team and uh, we are doing front-end stuff and uh, you can find more information about uh, me, myself and my activity on GitHub and Stack Overflow. I'm trying to be as active as possible in open source community. And uh, today I will cover just fundamental small details in HTML and CSS, which uh, our web developers are doing mistakes today, unfortunately. So yeah, let's start. And first of all, uh, in order to talk about accessibility, I would like to answer what is accessibility and why do we need it. This is the image of public library. And uh, yeah, it would be a, a good comparison to compare web and public library. Both those places are storing knowledge. And in order to access that knowledge, people need to uh, get upstairs. So what's basically wrong with this picture? Obviously, this public library missing access ramps. So if we add access ramps, everybody is able to get that knowledge, disregarding their abilities or disabilities we need to apply the same for the web. So everybody could be able to access our information and our knowledge. It is a mistake to think uh, that a uh, small number of people are disabled nowadays. It's, it's not the same in safe countries like Europe and United States, maybe, but uh, statistics says that worldwide uh, the number is much bigger. So basically every uh, six person on the planet is disabled. So we really need to uh, think about those people and uh, consider those people. If we think about IE11 as a kind of disability <laughs> and uh, we need to support IE11, uh, why don't we support disabled people, like people with a low vision or people with uncontrolled arm shaking. There are more, much more people with a low vision than IE11 users. So let's go ahead. Well, I intentionally made this slide with a background color, font color and font size. Exactly what are we using on our website vadin.com. And uh, well, the issue is kind of obvious. Yeah, this is much better and uh, in, in my opinion, accessibility is something that should concern all of us. You and me and everyone, every developer, every front-end developer, every day. Uh, what we create is uh, useless if it's not accessible. I will start with uh, HTML and the very first small thing is the document language. Uh, there are a couple of benefits of setting the document language and uh, many people unfortunately even nowadays uh, don't do that. So the first benefit is SEO. Uh, if you provide the language, search uh, engines would be... Well, it, would, it will be easier for them to crawl the document and to analyze it and uh, to put it in uh, relevant search results. The next benefit is translation tools. For example, uh, some languages are pretty similar. For example, Serbian and Croatian languages are pretty similar and the translation tools like Google Translate often have issues with analyzing which language is this. And if developer uh, will provide the specific language, translation tools will not have any troubles. And the last one, but not the least one, is assertive technologies, so screen readers. I will demonstrate you live on this seven seconds video, what is the difference? In this case, it will be French. First case, uh, it will be screen reader without correct language. And the second pronunciation will be with correct language. Yeah, French, beautiful. So as you can see, the necessity of providing link attribute is uh, necessary, it's, it's a must. So please, please don't forget to provide the link attribute for the HTML. And uh, the next tip will be small as well. Uh, for HTML markup, you can use hidden attribute to hide content visually and from screen readers. Many developers even nowadays using uh, class hidden or display none or something like that 
but actually if HTML is enough for you, you just use hidden and you'll be just fine. As you can see, browser support is, is on the level, so every major browser has the hidden support. So please use it instead of additional class names. Uh, the next uh, tip is if you are interested or if you will be interested in accessibility, truly interested, I highly recommend you to take a look on this uh, YouTube playlist. It's, it's called Accessibility Cast and uh, Rob Dodson is the guy who making those podcasts and he's a truly professional. He truly cares about accessibility and popularization of accessibility as well. So go ahead and check. Uh, I will leave the link in the description below. So take a look on that podcast. Highly recommend. The next small tip. If you need a button, please use a button. I saw many times, hundreds of times, that users trying to uh, style a div element or anchor element like a button and make it behave like a button, which is absolutely incorrect. You will never achieve the same result with a styled div or styled anchor. So if you need a button, use a button and style it. The browser support of styled button is proper, so every browser supports button styling properly. And the benefits of using native button or volume button as well. Our buttons are focusable by default, so keyboard accessibility will be proper. Uh, buttons are clickable, so small details like active state uh, will, be, will be supported. There are some small details about touch devices accessibility. So, for example, iOS provides a bigger, slightly bigger touch area for native button. And if you use style div, you will not get uh, that uh, bigger air tap area. And uh, very important, it button will be friendly for screen readers. There is a difference though between button and anchor. And many developers don't understand that either. So button performs some action and anchor leads somewhere. So button action, anchor leads somewhere. Uh, this is the uh, simple HTML code which uh, demonstrates simple button and uh, there is cog icon inside it. And uh, there is one thing which is fundamentally wrong with this button. That thing is called uh, area label. I will demonstrate it live. What is the difference between the first one without area label and the second one with area label? I will demonstrate it live. Um, first of all, I will enable my screen reader. I'm a Linux user and uh, unfortunately the best possible option for me as a Linux user is to use browser extension which is called Chromevox. Chromevox is a screen reader which is built in, in Chrome OS uh, for Chromebooks and uh, for Linux and uh, Windows users it's possible to use it as a browser extension. Chromevox spoken feedback is ready. Thank you. So I will demonstrate this Alert. is Alert. this Thanks. Two similar buttons, they look pretty similar and uh, you uh, face those buttons every day in your Gmail or anywhere else. When I click the first one without area label, it will be pronounced like button, 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 button. Well, not, not so helpful as I would like it to. And the second one will be pronounced as settings, button, settings, button. So much better. And that is what should be done for buttons with icons inside. Extensions tab. All right, I will turn off my screen reader and go ahead. Yeah, please, for uh, buttons with icons, use area label. Uh, I would like to uh, advertise my repository, which is called Awesome Polymer 2. There are many educational materials about Polymer 2 related stuff and uh, there are also playground section where you can find uh, JS fiddles with the uh, Polymer 2 components including Vardin components, uh, including our themes, Vardin Valo theme and Vardin material theme. Feel free to play with those JS fiddles and contribute as well. The next sec uh, section will be about CSS. CSS requires some, well, more fundamental knowledge. You need to know much more stuff than in HTML. And uh, I would like to start with a tab order. 
So what is tab order? Uh, probably you heard about keyboard accessibility. So if a user is not able to use mouse, for example, he or she has uh, uncontrolled arm shaking, it's not possible to use mouse for them. Also, computer geeks are using keyboard only and uh, I'm personally a such type of user. I prefer to use keyboard rather than mouse. It's very important to keep in mind that tab order and uh, visualization of current focus should be done properly. Tab order is indirectly related to the next thing I would like to uh, ask you. Stop using float right right now. There is a Flexbox CSS layout. Uh, it's, it's really simple to, uh, to learn it and to start using it. And I will actually demonstrate uh, live what I, I'm talking about. So we will go to the GitHub. GitHub is kind of the best website on the internet regarding to accessibility. Well, maybe not the best, but very, very good. But still, it has some issues. So for example, if I'm going uh, if I'm tabbing focusable elements, tab, 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 uh, the next focusable element I expect to be Microsoft Anchor. Because uh, normally tab order should go, uh, users are, expe are expecting tab order to go from top to bottom, from left to right. Uh, from top to bottom, from left to right. And uh, of course, horizontal tab order uh, will be inverted for right to left users, like Arabic speaking users or Hebrew speaking users, but for most of users it's from left to right. So next I'm expecting Microsoft Anchor to be focused and it's not true. So watch button is focused. And the reason for that is that uh, that block with the buttons is positioned with the float right. And that's why tab order is broken here. So instead of using float right, please use flexbox. flexbox. There is a flex grow and flex order, which you can use in order to get a proper sizing and proper positioning of your elements. In the case of GitHub, the same could be done with flexbox and tab order will be just perfect. So keep in mind keyboard accessibility and tab order. All right, the next slide will be about Finnish nightmares. Well, one of Finnish nightmares is there is no coffee. There is no coffee left and uh, there is the browser extension for Google Chrome, which is called no coffee. With a no coffee extension, you will be able to understand how it looks like uh, when you didn't have your coffee for a couple of days. So for example, if we, uh, if we open Valium.com, our website, and then we click this no coffee extension and then we say that we didn't have our coffee for three days. So our website will look like this. And if we didn't have our coffee for more days, it will look like this. So this extension is uh, simulating different kinds of uh, visual disabilities. You can simulate uh, many things like uh, contrast loss or blocked visual field and you will be able to understand how it feels like to use your website with a, uh, this or that kind of visual disability. That is kind of essential extension for front-end developers. Yeah, we already talked about uh, tab order, but yeah, the outline for focusable elements should be visible. Let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about. This is Polymer website. There are two buttons. Actually, those are styled anchors, which look like buttons. Many people, many developers nowadays use uh, blue color for buttons. And the default color for focused outlines is blue. So blue outline for blue buttons is not a good accessibility experience. So what Polymer web uh, developers did? They changed the default color of outline to red. So red outline for blue buttons is just perfect. Focus is visible. And when we enable our no coffee mode and uh, increase blur, it will be visible where our focus is. In case of default uh, color, it will not be visible. So pay attention uh, for contrast, for sufficient contrast of focused elements. 
the next thing is sufficient contrast by itself is essential. So um, how can you how can you uh, know uh, when contrast is sufficient and when it's not sufficient? Well, there is an extension for that, which well there are numbers actually. First of all, there are numbers, but you can feel numbers and you need some additional tool will, will, which will report you about issues, about contrast. There is of course Lighthouse. So Lighthouse is kind of default tool for accessibility check. It's built in in your web developer's tools and uh, yeah, you just need to uh, click quick audits and then perform audit accessibility and Lighthouse will perform accessibility test. Another uh, tool for accessibility uh, is called Accessibility Developer Tools and that, uh, that tool will add additional tab to your, to your web developer tools. I will show it. Yeah, Lighthouse top. It will, it will add the additional tab if we inspect our element. So, uh, for this, it, the tab which is called Accessibility Properties. So, um, uh, contrast ratio, you can see the current contrast ratio and uh, suggested contrast ratio for any uh, element. Alright, let's go ahead. Another uh, very handy tool for accessibility testing is called AX. X. I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, there are two versions, X and uh, X Coconut. So basically the difference between those is they are using different X Core. Uh, X Core 2.X uh, doesn't have uh, Shadow DOM support and X Core 3.X does have Shadow DOM support. So for example for Vadin.com we need to use uh, the latest uh, alpha version of X Core and X Coconut, which will allow us to uh, go inside Shadow DOM and analyze if there are any issues with the contrast. So you can also install it from store. The last thing is very, very important. We recently changed uh, the font size for our themes, Vadin Valor theme, from pixels to use rem. I will demonstrate what does that mean in practice. So um, on the left side there is uh, Valor theme previous version before change and on the right side there is a newer version and um, in this window I have Chrome settings and there is a setting which is called font size and many of disabled or partly disabled people with a low vision they are using font size setting to increase the default font size. So if I uh, select very large text I expect that on every web page my text will be larger than default. So I click it and as you can see on the left side the previous version where font size is strictly set uh, in pixels nothing has changed. So uh, users are getting very poor accessibility experience and on the right side font is increased and users are happy. So let's revert these to... yeah I can uh, set very small text as well. <laughs> it will be smaller th than uh, a normal and let's let return it to medium. So yeah, please stop using font size in pixels right away. Use RAM for uh, any new project. To summarize stuff, it's, it's very important to uh, keep in mind accessibility while building your interfaces and the web pages. It's important not just for disabled people. I mean, the tab order is essential for uh, not disabled people, for people like geeks. They will appreciate uh, that kind of accessibility as well. But uh, there are a lot of disabled people on this planet and we need to provide them uh, the, same, the same experience and the same access to the knowledge on the web. So let's make the web a better place to be for everyone. Thank you very much. Hopefully I motivated you to keep accessibility in mind. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.